Our next guest is Corey Zamora with Belly Dancing Studio. Thank you so much for coming on. Nice having me. Thank yeah. you so much. All right, tell me about yourself, Corey. I started dancing in 1953 in Southern California in a studio town. My father worked at MGM, so I was exposed to many cultures. Wow. And uh, one of my favorite things was listening to Middle Eastern music from a club. I had a radio show on Sundays, live from the Fez, Middle Eastern music. Then years later, on my 21st birthday, I was tired of ballet, tired of flamenco, tired of singing classical music. I wanted to know what belly dancing was, so they took me to the Fez. And all three of my instructors were from the Fez. It's no longer open. It was in Hollywood. Oh, wow. So um, I studied a style that is very not done much anymore. It's called AMCAB or American Cabaret. And the only thing American about it is that it was put together here by the immigrants. So your coastal towns kept more of the immigrants from all over the Middle East, North Africa, and Eastern Europe. And they put together bands in restaurants and hired dancers. And we first worked with mostly all Arabs where we had certain rhythms. Slowly we got the uh, Turkish and the Armenian in, which taught us different rhythms. Hmm. So the set, as we call it, the opening, the veil, the middle, the floor, the drum solo, the closing, uh, is all put together by the different cultures that make up the mi known Middle East, North Africa, Eastern Europe, Saudi. So wow. that's what makes AMCAB, or American Cabaret, so different because it uses everything. It's not just one little country or one little type or one little style. You have to know everything, which works wow. well in Fresno because I work for Persians, I work for Armenians, I work for Assyrians, I work for Egyptians. They all have their own music, they all have their own customs, and you have to know all that. Wonderful. Wow. You are very well cultured and... Uh... <laughs> I love what I do. You know, I just specialized in it and just being here, I came here in 72 and it helped because there were so many ethnic people here and I do what they want. They have to have the finger symbols, they have to have bare feet, they want the Turkish circle skirt. There's certain things that they want, that they see in their mind's eye from the old country that they want when they have their parties. And what I try to do with it, bringing it into the 21st century, is use more modern renditions or more Arabic pop music in the sets, especially with mixed generational families. Then you use the older stuff for the older people and the newer stuff gets the kids involved. Wonderful. So your target age range is very I, broad. Yes. Okay. Yes. And some people I some people I just teach for their own joy. I also coach professionals because this is such a um, stylized style and not me but people do it anymore. I have people who come in for intensives from all over the United States. I've even had someone come in from Finland. Wow. So it's it's um uh, it's it, it nobody does this anymore. They do like a song. Okay. <laughs> and that's it. So to do a set which can be anywhere from twenty to thirty five minutes, pacing yourself is and I specialized in it, and this is my whole life. I never had children or anything. This is what I do. Okay. Some of the ladies who did this along with me became grandmothers and such, and they, they always want me to teach because they can't do it anymore, especially the floor work. I see. So what are some of the misconceptions out there about belly dancing that you would like to debunk or um, kind of clear up for people? That it's not just for women. It not, has nothing to do with goddess worship, uh, that it's from the cultures, there's parts of spirituality put in there, such as czar, uh, the, the whirling dervishes, hand positions, uh, uh, hair dances from Iraq. All of that goes into play. And um, That sounds scary to some uh, fundamentalist type people. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, well, you know, the people have been here since, I see, I was born in 1950, and I've known these people all my life, so they've always been here. Okay. So it's nothing to me. We learn our hair, hair, hair tossing, that type of spiritualism from the Saudi from the Kaligi and from the Iraqi do a lot of hair dancing. Wow. Um, we learn things about circles and casting things in and out with the floor work, which has to do with shamanism. It has nothing to do with sex. I see. So it, the whole set takes you on a journey. Okay. It's wonderful you've invested so much of your life into this. I, you know, someone has to do it, and for some reason it was handed to me, and when something's handed to you, you respect that, it, and you go forward with it. Unpack that for me. What do you mean someone handed it to you? You know, I feel it's a gift. And I feel I, at first, when I ended up in Fresno from Venice Beach, I'm like, where in the hell am I? But I realize now this all worked for me to be in a place where I was somewhat cap in a capsule, mm -hmm. but I could keep working on this, and now it's come full circle, and it's what everybody is so interested in now. 
old traditional AMCAB, American Cabaret. Wow. Now, with the finger symbols and the whole nine yards. We worked with so many bands, and you know, each you got a member from a different country come into the band, they want to hear their songs. So uh -huh. that's why we learned so many songs from so many countries. Wow, what's that like working with the bands? Um, oh, I love it. You know standard songs. There's not much that differs. You know a song, other songs will sound sort of like it. Um, if you know your music, you can tell the band what you want to open with, what your veil's going to be, what you'd like them to play for floor. Um, but you, you, you're sort of, um, this is all done freestyle. See, it's uh -huh. not chore choreographed. So you can kind of get a feeling of what they're playing, uh -huh. and then you react to it, you go to it. I like to think that a dance, a deaf person can see the music. Okay. That's what a dance should be. Wow. It's got to be very liberating to just it is, go It is. It is. I'm and... very tired of being choreographed and shoes and this is the way somebody did it. You have to have a little bit of leeway. It's not cookie cutter, so you don't have to have a special body like ballet. Okay. So everybody adapts to it and they bring their own what's inside of them to it. That's what makes it everyone different. Wow. Now, what kind of things would you be teaching kids at, at a young age? Um, what are the foundational things um, you teach them? The basic steps. Okay. And children learn more of a folkloric rather than the, the two-piece bedla. They'll learn things more in a, a, a little dress with a hip scarf and things that are more to their age I and see. then evolve into womanhood with the, the costuming that shows the evolution of life. Wow. Very cool. Uh, There's all kinds of neat props we use, too. Swords, um, canes. We get the cane from Egypt, from the Saidi tribe. We have the shamadan, which is actually Egyptian. It's a candelabra worn on the head that leads the bride and groom into the reception, but all cultures like it now because it's fire. So we end up doing shamadan for birthdays and christenings and all kinds of things. Wow. And you mentioned a wedding. Have you been a part of weddings? Oh, or, yes. Or the, in Egyptian, the Egyptian is called a zephyr. The zephyr has the shamadan, and you bring the bride and groom into the reception. Hmm. I did one... Um, at the old Radisson downtown, hmm. and it, it was odd because they were Palestinian and Mexican, so everybody was like checking each other's. <laughs> I, I felt like they were gonna have a mariachi band on after us. So oh, it was it was interesting. Wow! How can uh, the viewers stay in touch with you? Oh, I'm on Facebook, Corey Zamora. I also have a website which is being rebuilt, BellyDancingByZamoras.com, and I'm at two five five one seven six one, and I do have a beginning class starting. January 5th, a Thursday at 6 p.m. It's an hour class. Each class is $10, and we take the fee at the first of each month. And after a month, if you don't like it, I want you to go find something you like to do so we don't lock anyone into contracts. Wonderful. Tell me a little bit more about your, uh, you, you mentioned instructional DVDs that you have. Oh, yes. I have a line of everything I teach is on a DVD. There's six veil ties, the cane, uh, sword, fire. Uh, I have a a really good seller all over the world called 75 Steps with Corey Zamora, which are just steps taught with two different zill patterns that are 2 4, then 4 4, 6 8, 9 8, drum solo, and um, it sort of drills, and it's just like a complete list of everything. Okay, so maybe if someone's shy, they don't want to come into a studio or something. Right, they right, just right. Do and I do, a, I do a lot of selling from Facebook, and you can <clears throat> view them. And I have a YouTube channel and has a lot of my solos on it, and it uh, does have some of my instructional from the DVDs on it. Wonderful. But when I'm asked someplace for my first time, I don't like to post pictures and things like that. I want somebody to hear what it is first. Okay. And then maybe at a later date, I'll come back and show a little bit more. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Corey. Thank you so much for having me. And I hope people look you up and uh, stay in touch. Thank you. Okay. We'll be right back.